Good morning. Very excited to be here. Let me start by asking all of you a question. Who in the room enjoys their banking experience? <laughs> Says a lot. Well, I have good news. The good news is for, we are currently going through one of the biggest transformations in financial history, the FinTech revolution. And it's going to transform banking as we know it. What I want to share with you all today is how this FinTech revolution will have winners and losers, and that it may have a significant impact on a financial center like Hong Kong. But that those who will be the most uh, significantly impacted by this FinTech revolution are gonna be those who work in the financial industry. The bankers of the future will be very different from the bankers today with very different personalities, backgrounds, and skill sets. But first, what is FinTech? FinTech, short for financial technology, is the innovative use of technology in the design and delivery of financial services. And it's transforming the banking world as we know it. Things from artificial intelligence, peer-to-peer -peer lending, big data, blockchain, crowdfunding, digital payments, and robo-advisors, just to name a few. But why is this fintech revolution happening now? Historically, as technology evolved, the banking industry was reasonably good at integrating those new technologies in order to better serve customers like yourselves. But all of that changed during the financial crisis of 2008. During the financial crisis, banks were busy dealing with the numerous new rules, regulatory requirements, and fines imposed on them. Punishments they in many cases deserved. But innovation became a very, very distant priority. But at the same time, some of the most game-changing technological innovations that have transformed the way we live have become part of our everyday life. Think about the iPhone, Airbnb, Uber, WhatsApp, or WeChat, for example. And what happened was that a gap was created between what your banks were offering you and what you as a customer came to expect especially from a user experience and convenience perspective. And that gap is what the fintech industry is tackling right now. But that gap was so big that even non-traditional banking players decided to jump in and capture this opportunity, mainly technology firms. For example, did you know that Facebook has currently around 50 different regulatory licenses in the US alone? licenses that would allow Facebook users to transfer money via the Messenger app. Amazon recently experimented with offering student loans off its platform. Alibaba's financial arm and financial launched a money market fund that has become the third biggest money market fund in the world, dislodging incumbents who have been doing this for decades. That fund has more than 150 million single investors who have, in average, invested less than 1,000 US dollars each. For many of them, their first investment ever. Tencent's messaging app WeChat has become one of the most common tools to transfer money. Last Chinese New Year, they processed more than 8 billion red envelope transactions. The same WeChat app, by the way, not only allows you to buy insurance products or invest in funds directly from your smartphone, but also book your next doctor appointment, order a taxi, donate to charity, and even find a date without ever leaving the app. The financial platforms of the future are not gonna be your traditional banks, but the technology firms. My six-month-old baby daughter 
is probably going to open her first bank account, not with an HSBC or a JP Morgan, but rather with a Facebook or Apple. And these traditional banks are obviously worried about these technology firms because they know that many of these tech firms have daily existing touch points with customers like yourselves. And to a certain extent, they have your trust and confidence. If you're comfortable enough to share your kids' photos on Facebook, wouldn't you use them as well to transfer money to friends and family? If you buy all your daily necessities on Amazon or Taobao, wouldn't you buy them as well to buy insurance products? What also worries the banks is that there are now thousands of new and dynamic fintech startups that are offering pro uh, products that used to be offered previously by traditional banks. Peer-to-peer -peer lending platforms now offer consumers an alternative to loans that used to be previously available mainly at banks. Robo-advisory platforms offer consumers asset management solutions that are not only more transparent in what they charge you, but also substantially cheaper. And what probably worries the banks the most is that these newcomers have the ability to pick and choose the parts of banking they want to get involved in, obviously the most profitable parts. It's very unlikely that you'll see a fintech startup wanting to become a deposit-taking institution, the vault, if you want, where the assets are held. They're very happy to control the front end, the consumer-facing part and leave the boring back end to the traditional banks. Things like post-trade settlement, reconciliation, or regulatory reporting. And this may create a new banking model of the future, where the traditional banks are handling the back end, basically becoming commoditized utility providers to these technology firms and fintech startups who control the front end and the customer experience. But this fintech revolution is also bringing a lot of other positive developments. One of the most important ones is financial inclusion. Currently in the world, we have more than 2 billion people who are completely unbanked. These are individuals who have no access to a bank account, no way to borrow money for college, and for whom the only way to save money is to literally stash it under their mattress. It perpetuates a vicious cycle of poverty. And by the way, this is not only a problem in developing countries, but also one in developed countries as well. In the US, for example, in cities like Miami or Detroit, more than 20% of households are completely unbanked. But there's good news again. The good news is for the first time in modern history, we are able to offer these individuals with financial services. And we're already making a positive difference. According to the World Bank, over the last five years, 700 million people went from being unbanked to being banked. And this is just the beginning. The fintech industry is continuously working on transforming how financial services are being delivered. And consumers like yourselves will be some of the biggest beneficiaries, not only from a user experience and convenience perspective, but also one of access and co cost savings. Artificial intelligence-powered chatbots that mimic human conversation and messaging apps are being tested to replace those call centers that you all probably hate. Biometric data and voice recognition tools are being tested to replace not only passwords, but those tokens that you probably hate even more. <laughs> Others are connecting FinTech to the Internet of Things and wearable technologies, embedding banking in your day-to-day -day life so that in the future, you will not even need to worry about it. Imagine your car insurance premiums automatically going down because your car knows that you have been driving safely and automatically notifies your insurer. Others are experimenting with uh, gamification in virtual reality 
as tools to provide financial services to millennials in ways they may actually enjoy. And that's an important area of focus. A recent study showed that more than 70% of millennials would rather go to the dentist than hear what their banks have to say. <laughs> so obviously the banks are worried about all this, but the banks have realized that the landscape is changing. And in order to survive, they need to evolve. Some banks will succeed in this evolution and being able to embed this culture of innovation and entrepreneurship across the organization, but many will not. And this has consequences. Citibank estimates that over the next 10 years, 30% of banking jobs will disappear. Some other experts put the number as high as 50%. One banking job out of two will disappear over the next 10 years. Well, some of you may say, hey, it's a good thing. There'll be less bankers in the world. <laughs> but this has very serious consequences on any financial center, including Hong Kong, that, are, that is at the crossroads of all this. Because it's not only the direct job losses, that 30 to 50%, but also all the related economy around, from law firms and accounting firms, to hotels and restaurants. Yes, some new jobs will be created in the fintech industry, but in substantially smaller numbers. And these are very different jobs with very different skill sets than those required from those bankers today. These are jobs for creative designers and programmers, not for traders or compliance officers. So what do we need to do? So many of us in the fintech community are working not only with governments to formulate new policies or regulators to enact reform, but also the broader community in shaping this new ecosystem and ensuring that we can all adapt to this new reality. But that's not enough. We need a fundamental change in mindset where parents are more comfortable with the idea of their kids joining startups or launching startups rather than taking stable jobs in banks. And when I mean parents, that includes those tiger moms that we hear about. But the most important change is probably the way we train the next generation of talent. For example, I teach the first FinTech university course in Asia because I fundamentally believe that in 2016, it's, it's unacceptable that we let students graduate out of finance programs with no courses on FinTech. But we need to go further than that. Yes, we need to continue teaching core courses like economics, corporate finance, or strategy. But we need to embed in the curriculum of every finance program or business school courses on design thinking, coding, and product development. And this is very important because the bankers of the future and those who will shape the future of this industry are not going to be your traditional bankers, but rather designers, programmers, and creative thinkers. Thank you.